Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. If you could like this video and hit subscribe and even leave a comment, I would really appreciate it. Enjoy the clip. Show up at 6.30 in the morning at a Matthews office. Everyone will be there, suited and booted, ripping, ready to go. Show up at any Matthews office. Now, show up at a competitor's office at 7.30 in the morning. Doors are fucking locked. <laughs> no one's there. <laughs> and that's the third part. See how I tie that together? Culture. Culture. We talked about a lot of culture about keeping it fun. Okay. No, I'm talking the culture of work. Work ethic. But I thought work-life balance and like yeah, you, and, you want to get and, to this question and and all the colleges yeah. are telling their kids, you know, you need to work hard and so not too hard though. So I um I have a theory on the work. life I'm just like, laying the softball yeah, right yeah, out yeah, here yeah. for you. Yeah, <laughs> this is my favorite answer. This is where Zach wants me to say, go to my social media and you can see for yourself. I know. I retweeted uh, it. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um. I don't think it's that colleges or professors, some do, sure, <laughs> spouses and promotes work-life balance, like don't work that hard, all right? I think what it was, was when we were growing up, half the room was like, I need to be successful and I, I want to go take over the world, da, 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 da. like maybe, maybe that's us, okay? And the other half didn't, and that's okay, because again, God makes everyone different. But I think 20, 30, 40 years ago, um, I think... The other half that's like, hey, I just want to get a job. I just want to make a little money and I just want to, you know, and which again, there's no judgment. It's just different. It's different. I think back then they just were quiet and they were like, hey, they looked at guys like you and I was like, those guys are crazy. Why would they want that? I don't want that. And we were like, that's cool. You do you. And they just said, and you do you. And and we, 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 we go our separate ways in life in the sense we choose different paths. I think the issue now in, in our culture, in our society is that other half of the room is so loud. And not only do they say, hey, I don't agree with that life of like 80 hours a week. Like, that's miserable. You work to li you live to work. Like, fine. I, I have things about your choices that I could say, but like, I'm kind of like live and let live. Like you live your life. I live mine. But nowadays that other 50%, they, they just scream at you and they're like, you're, you know, this is bad. And they just drip with judgment and they just can't stand you for it. And I think, cause internally it makes them feel guilty. It makes them feel bad that they're not choosing that because they know deep down that if they were willing over a long period of time to make that sacrifice and put to the side the thirsty Thursdays, like, okay, no, put to the side all the, the hobbies and the social activities. That, that's what you really give up. From 22 to 35, I worked nonstop. That's all I did. Was it? I got married. I had three kids. Now I got four. Three kids. I went on tons of vacations. I coached my kids sports. So it wasn't all that I did. But what did I sacrifice? I did not sacrifice my life. I did not sacrifice my marriage. I did not sacrifice my kids, my time with my kids. You know what I sacrificed? Some workouts. Got a little soft around the belly. I'm still working on that. <laughs> I sacrificed. There's Saturdays or for the boys. I sacrificed, you know, hobbies and and things that you like to do, but you really don't need to do. So the rest of my life, I can do those whenever and wherever I want, if that's what I want to do, which right now, that's not what I want to do. I want to keep spending time with my family and I want to keep kicking ass. And all the people that didn't sacrifice and did Thirsty Thursdays forever are now 35. It's and no longer and cool to be social all the time. They're like, fuck, and now I got to get started. But yeah, and then that's demoralizing. Or they don't. And that's demoralizing. Or, yeah. And I, I'm generalizing here, which I really yeah. don't like to do, but now they're pissed and they're angry and they're just, they're screaming at us. I hear you. Okay. Now I, um, yeah, I did a video. No, I did a talk. It was a university of Alabama. And by the way, I've given this speech like a thousand times at Matthews. Like the Matthews guys roll their eyes. Like, oh, here we go. Work-life balance. I've heard this one. Um, but, uh, <laughs> now that I have social media, um, it was, uh, you know, it was a pretty act active post is like someone is a video, um, where I was talking about a conversation, I, I there was a reporter in LA when I was living out in LA, uh, I think it was LA Business Journal, we wanted to come and talk about Matthews. We had started a couple of years, we're growing quick and I was telling her my hours, I get in the office at 5.45, I stay till 7, 7.30. I have at the time, you know, probably two kids, I coach their sports and she's like, oh my God, like when do you have time for work-life balance? Like you're doing all this at the company and then you got the kids, like when do you have time for you? Like work-life balance? And I was like, well, and I'm just, I'm just rolling. I'm just making stuff up. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> like, this is not something I practiced. And I said, well, like, 
work life balance or work day balance? And I was like, I think you're talking about like work day balance. And right now I don't have any. And I said, but work life balance, I'll have way better balance than you do. And like, you know, I have like no filter and she's like, huh? I said, what do you mean? I said, well, work day balance, certainly right now. Like I wake up, I go to work, I go home, I put my kids to bed, talk to my wife, go to sleep, rinse, wash, repeat, weekends. Um, I coach my kids, I play with my kids. And if it's nap time, I go to the office. Like, yeah, it's brutal. It's hard, Spartan lifestyle, right? <laughs> All time, train for war. So, um, but I'm doing this. So one day, if God willing and the creek doesn't rise, like I will have the luxury of not ever having to work again at a young age. And that that's my hope. I don't like hope. That's my strategy. Eh, strategy is good. That's what I know to be true. I know that if I do this, it will work out. And I might be an idiot. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. So that's my choice. And I said, so right now, yes, your your day is more balanced. Like you work like eight hours a day, right? So yeah, I said, then you, you know, you, what do you do for hobbies? Like, I, you know, I go to yoga and I spend time. I said, no, that, that's what I figured. I said, so right now, yes, I work more than you. But I said, work-life balance is a myth. And I said, I'll tell you why. Because from 22 to 32, I work eight hours a week. From 32 to, you know, 35, 37, I think I was, I'm trying to do the math here. Yeah. Like, I'll work 60. And from 37 to 42, I'll work 20. And then at 42, I'm done. And so add that up, like the hours per year, 50 work weeks in a year. And then for you, take, you know, 40 hours a week times 50 weeks a year is 2,000 hours times 40 years, because you'll probably have to work that long um, unless your parents give you a bunch of money, which I ain't getting that, you know? So um, that's, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, um, that's 80,000 hours. And then when I added up mine, I did, I had a whiteboard because I always have a whiteboard because the whiteboards are awesome. And I, I um, <laughs> mine was like 68,000. And I said, so you're going to work more than me. It sounds like you don't have work-life balance. I do. And she wasn't happy about that. But, uh, but it kind of taught me is like, it was, uh, you know, I just always try and break things down to like the facts. I don't like to state opinions as facts. So I was just like, here are the facts. And like, it convinced me otherwise. She's like, well, I'm, I'm, I can't. And I was like, there you go. And it just kind of like, I've always shared that story. And I shared that story at the University of Alabama at the real estate school I was you know, giving a talk to about a month ago. And um, yeah, look, it's delayed gratification. 